Earlier this week, I watched Julian Eilert's uh, post bag video where he took delivery of one of these. It's a Minghee 3806. Uh, it's a book boost converter, and I've had one of these for a while. And I use it as my main power supply here in the solar shed. But to test this DC to DC converter, he got a DC load and he plugged it in and he found that the uh, voltage wasn't very stable uh, on a DC load. But I think he did test it on a resistor later and found it was much more stable. Um, but I've also got a new little power supply. Here's a DC book uh, power supply and um, it's got a USB output on it and the outputs on this side and the inputs on there it's micro controlled it's got the little uh, linear converter under there and that sort of thing and it's got a nice little screen on it but I thought I want to play with a DC electronic load but I haven't got one now I could go out and order one uh, from China they're about 13 pounds I guess what's that uh, 18 to 20 dollars something like that but to be honest, I can't be bothered waiting the three weeks. So I started scratching my head and wondered whether I could just build one out of bits that I had hanging about. Now, the last time I fancied playing with something, uh, something I didn't have, I ended up making my own here, this Arduino-based battery capacity checker. And I was really pleased with the result. It's fairly accurate. But of course this isn't a constant current device. As the voltage goes down in the battery, the current going through these resistors decreases as well due to Ohm's law. I current equals voltage divided by resistance. So as the voltage decreases, the resistance stays the same, so the current must decrease as well. However, that isn't to say that this design couldn't be adapted to become a constant current load. Okay, so as before, we can have our plus and our minus. In this case, it's a power supply that I want to test. And we can put a low value resistor in series with the output of the power supply and we can use that as our shunt resistor much the same as I did in the battery capacity checker but rather than put an additional load in here we can just put the MOSFET and again an N channel MOSFET so that's where the arrow goes and by changing the pulse width on the MOSFET using a PWM pin on an Arduino we can vary the current that's allowed to uh, move around this circuit from positive to negative and create a constant current and once again as before if we take a voltage reading uh, on the shunt resistor to some analog pins on the Arduino we create, uh, connect the N-channel MOSFET to a digital pin and as long as they all share the same ground we should be able to work out the current that's flowing from the power supply and create a constant current load. If we add in the... Uh, I usually like using a nano and a screen Mine's the uh, favourite is the 5110 Nokia screen. And if we add some buttons to this, we'll be able to adjust the current that we want to take away from the power supply. So I've been digging through my component boxes and I've grabbed a Nano here. Now I'm using the Nano because it's got USB on it and that's a convenient way to power the sensing side of the circuit but also I might use it for data logging in the future possibly. I've got a 5110 screen and an N-channel MOSFET. Now I've gone for the 3205, the IRF 3205, not because it's the best suited for this job, 
um, although I think it will do the job that I'm asking of it, it's because I've got lots in my box. And I have to admit, I have bought this, but here's a 25 watt uh, panel resistor. It's a 0.47 ohm resistor, uh, so a very low value as my shunt resistor. Now I've gone for a 20, 25 sorry, watt resistor because I want this circuit to pull about 20 watts, hopefully. But in one of my previous videos, somebody did mention this is a panel resistor. It will get very hot. It is meant to be attached to something. So I've dug out a big heatsink. Um, and I know that the MOSFET will also get quite warm. So I can attach it to this heatsink as well. So I've also been able to find a box. A noisy box, because the screws are inside. Um, which I think will probably house all this as well, so if I put the screen there, um, I think it's got enough space for these inside, and I'm thinking I'll cut a hole in the back plate here, and get access to the heatsink outside the box. So this is kind of one of those projects where I'm just going for it, hacking out bits of circuit board, I've cut that heat sink down uh, to a suitable size I think for the box whether it will dissipate enough heat or not I guess remains to be seen and the hacking away continues I do think perhaps a Dremel might be useful might have to get myself one now it may not be the neatest hole and it's certainly not the straightest lines but it doesn't really matter because this is going to go over the top and then the resistor and the MOSFET will connect here. So I just need to create some holes and then tap this, uh, which I've never done before, so that should be interesting. Uh, so with my M3 screws here, uh, I've got a 2.5 mil drill bit and an M3 tap. Um, I think it's about right. I'm just going to give it a go and hope for the best. If not, I can use some self-tapping screws, can't I? Right then, so I've drilled those holes, and they seem all right. Now for the tapping. Um, now I've got my uh, M3 tap tool here. I've also got a piece of wood with a 3mm hole in it, in the hope that that will help me keep this tap level. So... I don't know how this is going to go, but let's see what happens. So, I'm quite pleased with the results. The taps didn't work properly, but I've managed to use a bit of brute force and ignorance, and I've got them in. The only thing, or the only issue, as I used a bit too much brute force on this one, the head came off the screw. Um, but it's pretty solid, and hopefully it'll be a good base for my project. So there's certainly a lot of guesswork here, but I've marked some holes for the resistor uh, to be mounted on, and the MOSFET. Um, so I'll punch them, and I'll see if it's going to tap, or whether I use something else. Well, with some fairly inventive mounting methods, I've managed to get the MOSFET and the resistor mounted, and uh, I don't think on the outside it's going to look too bad. So this is the high power part of the circuit complete, really. I've added these banana plugs on here for the input of the load. Uh, this crimp ring connector is a bit big, to be honest, but I think a couple of washers and I've made that work. They're also soldered as well as crimped. So the main power comes through the positive, through the resistor, down to the drain pin on the MOSFET, and then the source pin goes out to ground. You'll also notice these thinner wires here. We've got the sensing wire for the Arduino, uh, and the load voltage. 
we've got the yellow one which is the voltage at the other end of the shunt resistor so that we can work out how much current is going through the shunt resistor. We've got the negative cable here because we need to make sure that the Arduino shares the same um, ground as the load to ensure that these measurements are accurate. And finally the green wire is the gate of the MOSFET. The last thing to mention is I have put some heat compound as well on the resistor and the MOSFET attaching it to the heat sink so hopefully that should dissipate plenty of heat. So this seems like a sensible place to stop this video now. In my next video I'll look at the Arduino part of the circuit and I'll also look at the code to get this whole project running. So hopefully you'll join me then. If you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you can and comment down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.